Okay, so this will be the start of turn seven. In turn six, Alyssa was killed again by one of the encounters, the Great Ooze. So that took our hit points down to zero. Now we do have uh, two healing surges that we're allowed to use according to the rules, and we can use a third one if we want to make the game easier on ourselves. So for now, we're still just within the realm of using the two tokens that uh, the, the basic rules tell you about. So we're back up to four hit points. So Alyssa springs back into action. Kind of a who, what, where, when, why, how kind of thing, I imagine. And what are our options? So at, at this point, at least, at least we have options and they're not so terrible like they were before. Here we have pretty much a no-brainer because she has that careful attack. She's already adjacent to the skeleton. So we're just going to careful attack the skeleton, which is going to, you know, instantly kill it. So we'll put him back over here on the stack of monsters. And we this one now becomes part of our experience pile. And the good thing is it has two experience. That one had two experience, this one had one experience, so we now have a total of five experience, which is enough to cancel an encounter if it's a particularly bad encounter. So, we attacked, and now we're going to move to the edge of this tile to explore over here. So we attacked, we moved, uh, we do get a treasure item, so let's uh, make a note of that. And we don't have our good one that lets us get one hit point back, because that was unfortunately discarded because of the Great Ooze. So we're going to draw a treasure card. Play it immediately. Look at the top three cards of the encounter deck and put them back in any order. And discard it after you play it. So... Meh. I, I guess it could be helpful, but I would much rather have something better. So that we have that one. We have that one. <laughs> These are all bad. And we have this one. So let's, basically the idea is you want to put them back in the order that they will, you know, hurt you the least. And I imagine this is probably the least... So each hero takes damage equal to the number of monsters he or she controls. So for me right now, that would be uh, one. So we'll probably have that be the top one. And then we have spider webs. Attack the active hero, becomes immobilized. If it, if, and if it misses, you get slowed. So it does, that doesn't do damage. So maybe, maybe even that one will go on top. And then Strahd attacks, so this one you take damage no matter what, and it's, so this is, that's easy. So the choice here is pretty easy. So this one I'm going to put on the bottom, so that'll be the, the third one I draw. And so then it's between this one and this one. I think we'll put this one down next, it's not terrible. And then we'll put this one down. So now we at least know what the next three encounters are. So, are we exploring? Yes, we're exploring. So we're going to draw a tile. And it's a black one, so at least we're not moving the time track forward. So we have a, a black tile, and we are going to be placing a monster. So let's draw from the monster pile. And it's a rat swarm. Could be worse. So we'll put that down there next to the gargoyle. Take our rat swarm, place it onto the bone pile. So we did kill the skeleton, so we can knock that out. So we uh, we will have a forced encounter. There is no villain. The gargoyle is still our monster number one, and now the rats are monster number two. So. For starters, we're taking the forced encounter, and we know what this one is. It's going to either slow us down or immobilize us. 
but not do any damage. So attack the active hero. Well, let's read the thing. Spider webs. Hundreds of tiny spiders crawl across the ceiling, sending a thick mass of webs down upon you. And we attack. If it hits, we're mobilized. If not, we're slowed. So let's hope it misses. <clears throat> it's only a plus four. No comment. <laughs> so we're mobilized. <clears throat> um, and I could have canceled that, but again, I already know there's worse traps coming, or worse encounters coming, so we want to save our experience for something worse. So the gargoyle technically activates, but it's too far away, so it just sits there and does nothing. So then the rats activate. If the rat's swarm is within a tile, it is. It moves to the closest hero's tile and attacks the multitude of bites. Now this is a case where it's going to move from, from the bone pile to the bone pile because it doesn't specify that it has to be adjacent to us. So it's going to move from bone pile to bone pile. So... This kind of makes me wish, again, that when I moved from here to here, I had stayed adjacent to the bone pile, but I didn't think about it. Oh, wait, actually, I am adjacent, because I'm, I'm still, you know, corner to corner. So the good thing about being adjacent is that I can still kill it, even though I'm immobilized. Because immobilization basically acts like your legs are anchored to the ground. But you can still draw a bow, or you can still swing your sword, or if you have like a bite attack, you can still bite if you're adjacent. So I can still use her careful attack. But for now, the rats get to attack, and they get a plus seven. So let's see what they get. They'll probably roll a nat 20. A four. So four plus seven is 11, which is too low to hit me. And the rat swarm doesn't have any, you know, effect if it misses, shockingly enough. So that's going to be the end of turn seven, and we'll continue on in the next video with turn eight.